study guide six self test two question two so we have two charges positive to q positive q location p where q is 3.5 microcoulomb. We need to calculate the electric field magnitude and direction at the location P such that if I am to call this one R1 and this one R2. Now the distance from here to here is 2.5, 10 to the power of minus six. And the distance from here to here is 3.7. Okay, so uh, we need to calculate the electric field right at the location P. What we know is the following. I'll take this for the first Q. Since the, the charge is positive, then the electric field at the location P will be pointing away. So in this case, I will call this one E1. And then... This one also E2. So, how much is E1 and E2? My coordinates are X, Y. So, E1. As K Q one divided by R one squared. How much is R one? From Pythagoras, I can find R one to be two point five. 10 to the power minus 6 squared three point seven squared and then R1 is 4.47 4 10 to the power minus six meter then e1 is eight point nine nine ten to the power nine times three point five ten to the power minus six this is for e1 divided by four point four seven 10 to the power minus 6 squared and E1 is 1.576 10 to the power 15 Newton per Coulomb. E2, on the other hand, is also, as you can see, pointing away because that's a positive charge, while R2 here is 3.7. 
10 to the power minus 6, so E2 as 8.99 10, 10 to the power 9 times 2 times 3.5 10 to the power minus 6. Why? Because it's 2Q. Divided by what is R2? 3.7. Ten to the power of minus six squared and e two as four point five nine seven ten to the power fifteen newton per coulomb. So this is e one and this is and e two. Those are the magnitudes. In order to calculate the total electric field, I need to do the projection. So the angle here is the same as the angle here. So I need to calculate this theta. So in this case, I have tan theta equals to 3.7 divided by 2.5. So theta is tan inverse of 3.7 divided by 2.5. And theta equals to 55.9. So I found theta, which means if I now project E1, this is going to be E1y, E1x, and this one, E1y. So if I calculate the components, the X and Y components for the E total, I have only E1 projected on the X as the component for the X, while the Y is E2 plus EY, which is E1 projected on the Y. So if I say E total X, it will be E1X, and then E total X as E1 cosine 55.95 or E total X as 1.576 10 to the power 15 times cosine 55.95 we thought x as 8.824 10 to the power 14 newton per coulomb we thought y as e2 plus e1 sine 55.59 point uh, nine five degrees and then e to y would be 5.903 10 to the power of 15 newton per coulomb. Again, using Pythagoras, I can calculate the etoat. This is the magnitude that is etoat x squared plus etoat y squared 
לבעיטות. אז, 5.969, 10 to the power of 15, use as a cool. Which basically, if I am now to zoom in here and redraw This is going to be B dot X. And now this one is going to be B dot Y. And now this one is B dot. And now this is the angle phi. The angle phi here is tan inverse, the y component, which is 5.903.15 divided by 8.824. 10 to the power of 14, and phi is 81.5 degrees. Part B is where along the line between the two charges is the electric field equal to zero? There will be a point in between where the electric field is zero. Why? Because between I have E1 pointing this way and I have E2 pointing this way. So there will be a a point in between where E1 equals to E2. And then that, in this case, the electric field will cancel at that point. So if I assume that this point is X, which is the distance between Q and that point, P, then the distance between this point and the 2q will be 2.5 10 to the power minus 6 minus x. So the distance here, 2.5 10 to the power minus 6 minus x. So if I write E1, as k q divided by x squared and e2 as k 2q divided by 2.5 10 to the power minus 6 minus x squared then if I equate one E1 to E2, I should be able to find that uh, point by solving for the X. So let's do this. So E1 and E2 are equal. And in this case, I have K Q over X squared equals to take the two outside 2k q over 2.5 minus x squared k and q will cancel then this is going to be 
two x squared equals two, two point five times the power minus six minus x squared, or two x squared equals two. The square of the first one, which is 6.25, 10 to the power minus 12. Square of the second one, plus x squared. Then minus 2 times 2.5 to the power 6 times x minus 5, 10 to the power minus 6, x. Now, if you take them all to the other side, x squared will be subtracted from 2x squared, then this is going to be x squared, and now this plus 5, 10 to the power minus 6x, and then minus 6.25, 10 to the power minus 12, and this is equal to zero. Now I need to solve for this quadratic equation, Right, where x here is minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2, 2a. Now, a here is 1, b here is 5, 10 to the power minus 6, and C here is minus 6.25, 10 to the power minus 12. So if I substitute here, what do I get? I get the solution and minus 5, 10 to the power minus 6, plus minus. 5, 10 to the power minus 6 squared, minus 4, A is 1, and C is minus 6.25, 10 to the power minus 12, divided by, by 2. Then here I have two solutions, either minus 6.0, 5, 10 to the power minus 6 meters, which is previous solution, or 1.035, 10 to the power minus 6 meters. Problem 9, 13, 31. Two small spheres of equal mass, 3.2, 10 to the power minus 3 kilograms, are suspended from a common point by threads, each of length 31 centimeters. So, I have two spheres. would amass each of 3.2, 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram. The angle between here is 31 degrees. The length of the thread is Thirty-one centimeters. Equal positive charges are placed on the spheres. So we have here positive charge, which move to equilibrium position as shown. We need a to draw the free body diagram 
for either sphere at equilibrium. So, so what do we have here? We have two spheres, were each with a mass of 3.2 10 to the power minus 3 kilograms. Those ones are going to have those forces, so I'll work on here. Due to the existence of that of that thread, and then I have the gravitational force, and I also have the the repulsive electric force Fe. Why? Because I have two positive charges. Then each will exert a force on the other such that it is pushing it away. In this case, if I am to draw a vertical line here, then this one is, is R. And in this case, if I am to call this one, this angle, theta, then theta is 15.5 degrees. Okay, so this is the free body diagram that caused that sphere to uh, move this way to reach the equilibrium. Now the part B is what is the charge on each sphere? I need to calculate this charge. How do I do that? At equilibrium, you, using Newton's law, I know that sigma Fy equals to zero, which means if I am to look at the angle between the, the tension force and the vertical line, then this one would be theta as well. Which means I have T cosine theta minus Fg equals to zero, which means T as Fg divided by cosine theta, or T as Mg divided by cosine theta, 3.2, Ten to the power minus three times nine point eight divided by cosine fifteen point five, and T is zero point zero three. So I found the tension force from uh, applying Newton's law uh, on the y-axis and then I can do the same on the x-axis to find the electric force. So let's look at the x-axis. What do I have here? I have Fe as negative and I have T sine theta as positive. So here, T sine theta minus Fe equals to zero, or Fe as T sine theta. I also know that Fe equals to, 
I need to come up with the relationship with the charge because I need to calculate this charge. I know that Fe in this case is K Q Q divided by R squared. I need to calculate R. So how do I calculate R? I can calculate half R from knowing the length of the of the thread and knowing the angle, right? I know that half R equals to L, which is 31 centimeters, sine theta. L sine theta. So this is L sine theta, right? Which means R equals to 2 times 31 centimeter, which is 31 times to the power minus 2 sine 15.5 degrees and r is 16.57 10 to the power minus 2 meter then i can now say fe is 8.99 10 to the power 9 times Q squared divided by 16.57 10 to the power of minus 2. From, if I say this is 1 and this is 2, by equating 1 and 2, I have T, which is 0 0.0325 sine 15.5 equals to 8.99 10 to the power 9 times Q squared divided by 16.57 10 to the power minus 2. Then, rearranging Q squared equals to 2.65, 10 to the power minus 14, and then a Q equals to 1.63, 10 to the power minus 7 Coulomb. 19. Thirty-eight. Two charges have locations as shown in figure 1928. Charge Q1 is a negative charge. Q2 is a negative charge as well. What is the electric field magnitude and direction at A, point A, and B, point B? So we'll start first with the, with the drawing. So we have here Q1. We have here... Q2, such that Q1 is minus 3.6, 10 to the power minus 8 Coulomb. Q2 is minus 5.2, 10 to the power minus 8 Coulomb. I have the distance between Q1 and the Q2 as 6.3 I have the distance between point A and point A as 2.5 then point B is here 
I have the distance between Q2 and point B as 1.9 10 to the power minus 6 meters. We need the electric field at point A and the electric field at point B. My coordinates are X and Y. So both of them are negative charges. In this case, the electric field at point A due to Q1 will be pointing in this direction. The electric field at point A due to Q2, since it's also negative, will be pointing in this direction. So what we need to do here is calculate E1 and E2. However, what is R1? R1 is, is here. And R2 is, is this. So R1 is 6.3, 10 to the power minus 6, minus 2.5. 3.8, 10 to the power minus 6 meter. Then E1, okay, Q1 over R1 squared, E1 is 8.99, 10 to the power 9, times Q1 is 3, magnitude, divided by R1 squared, which is 3.8, 10 to the power minus 6 squared. Then E1 is 2.24, 10 to the power Newton per Coulomb. E2, on the other hand, again, K, Q2 over R2 squared, E2 is 2 is 2.5. E2 is 2.5. So this is E2. Now, EA, since they are in the opposite direction, then the, the total EA would be the difference between E2 and E1. E2 is a greater than E1, which means that the net electric field at this point would be pointing in the direction of E2. Let me call this one EA. Then EA is E2 minus E1. EA is 5.24, 10 to the power 13 newton per coulomb. So this is EA. Now EB for B, negative charge, so it will be pointing toward Q1. So this is, I'm going to call this one E1 
prime, and then for the, the electric field from Q2 is also pointing toward V2 prime. Then the distance now, the new distance between Q1 and point B, which is I will be calling R1 prime, then this distance would be R1 prime as 6.3 to the power minus 6 plus 1.9. So here, Now I have R1 prime uh, 6.3, 10 to the power minus 6 plus 1.9, 10 to the power minus 6, R1 prime as 8.2, 10 to the power minus 6 meter. What about R2 prime? R2 prime as 1.9, 10 to the power minus 6. So R2 prime is 1.9, 10 to the power minus 6 meter. I need those ones to calculate the electric field. So now for E1 prime, once you prepare the distances, things will be straightforward. K, Again, Q1, the same. This is not going to change. What's going to change is the now R1 prime squared, and now E1 prime is 4.81, 10 to the power 12 Newton per Coulomb. E2 prime, again, K. Q2 divided by R2 prime squared. E2 prime as 1.295, 10 to the power 14 Newton per Coulomb. Now, EB as I can see that both of them are pointing in the same direction, which means the total electric field at point B will be the summation of those E1 prime and E2 prime. And E, B as 1.34 Newton per coulomb. So this one is in the negative X or West, and EA is in the positive X or East. In 1948, we have the following. 1948, we have a proton released from rest at the surface of a positively charged then Release from rest at the surface of a positively charged plate and travels to a parallel negatively charged plate that is 2.1 centimeter away. So I would call this one delta Y. So I have here. V1 equals to zero, 
that's a proton. I have delta Y as 2.1 centimeter, which is 10 to the power minus 2 meter. My coordinates, X, Y. It takes the, the proton 1.6 10 to the power minus 8 seconds to reach the negatively charged plate. What is the electric field magnitude and direction between the plates? <clears throat> so direction-wise, I know that uh, the electric field will be pointing from the positive charge toward the negative charge. So this is the direction. So E is upward. Now what is the value of the E? In case of the protons or electrons here, we have the gravity being neglected. And then in this case, we can use also here the kinematics equations and uniform electric field. In this case, I should be able to calculate the acceleration due to the electric force by this electric field. So here I have Fe equals to number one. Let me put what I also know about uh, this uh, problem. The charge is 1.602, 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. What else? I know the, the mass for the proton is 1.67, 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. Uh, okay, so now I can calculate the acceleration. I know the delta Y equals to half AY T squared. I know the time, I know the delta Y, which is here, 2.1 10 to the power minus 2 equals to half a y times 1.6 10 to the power minus 8 squared. And in this case, the acceleration, which is pointing upward, right? Now, this is a proton, and we know that if, if the charge is positive, then the direction of the electric field is in the same direction of the electric force. So the acceleration would be pointing upward and then AY would be 1.64 10 to the power 14 meter per second squared. So this is the acceleration caused by the electric field. By the force, exerted due to the electric field. Now, I know that this force equals to M A Y, and I also know that the force is Q E. Then by equating, I can write M A Y equals to Q E or or e equals to m a y divided by by q and in this case e is the mass is 1.67 10 to the power minus 27 times 1.64 10 to the power 14 divided by 1.602 10 to the power minus 19. And the electric field is 
1.71 10 to the power 6 newton per coulomb. 1949. And question 1949, we have the following. An electron travels between deflecting plates with an initial velocity of 2 times 10 to the power 7 meter per second parallel to the plate which lie in a horizontal plane. The electric field is 2.2 10 to the power 4 newton per coulomb downward and the plates have a length of 4 centimeters. When the electron leaves the plates, A, how far has it dropped or risen? Specify which. What is its velocity, magnitude, and direction? Okay. So we have two plates. We know that the electric field will be pointing from the positive toward the, toward the negative. We have an electron comes in with V X. such that this velocity Vx as 2 to the power 7 meter per second. I have the electric field 2.2 .2, 10 to the power 4 newton per coulomb. So they said in the question, the electric field is downward, which means I have the positive charges up, negative charges down. So here is an electron. What else? I know delta x here. I'm going to call this one delta x. So my coordinates are x and y this way. Then my delta x is 4 centimeters. I need the direction of the deflection of this electron. And I also need the velocity, magnitude, and direction. So number one, this is an electron. The direction of the force will be opposite of the direction of the electric field, which means the force, once it enters, let me write this one, when it enters here, let's say, one of the points, the force would be pointing upward. Opposite than the electric field. So it will deflect going upward, right? Okay. Now, it will be starting from zero. So here I have V, Y naught as zero. And then at the end, there will be a velocity along the y-axis. Then there will be here vy. I need this vy to calculate the total, the total velocity. The vy is pointing upward. Vy naught here at the beginning is is zero. 
So I can still use the, the kinematics equations. Here, what do I know? I know delta x, so I have x minus x naught equals to vx t. I know vx, I know delta x, I can get t. t equals to a few delta x divided by vx and t is 4 times 10 to the power minus 2 divided by vx 2 10 to the power 7 and t equals to 2 nano second or 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. So I got the time. I got the time it takes the electron to reach the the end of the plate using the the velocity provided in the x on the x axis and the distance delta x. F E equals to M A and F E equals to Q E. Since I know the charge, I know the electric field. That's uh, another way, then I, I know the mass of the electron, then I can calculate the uh, acceleration. Then, equating MAY equals to QE, then AY equals to QE divided by M, what is the mass for the electron? I know the mass for the electron as 9.11, 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms. This is given. Then AY is 1.602, 10 to the power minus 19, times the electric field is 2.2, .2, 10 to the power 4, divided by the mass, which is 9.11, 10 to the power minus 31, and the acceleration Ay is 3.869, 10 to the power 15 meter per second square. Now, after I calculated the acceleration, let's do the deflection. How much is deflecting? I have y minus y naught, which is my delta y, equals to b y naught t plus half a y t squared. My initial velocity for the y is zero, then delta y equals to half a y t squared, or delta y equals to 7.74 10 to the power minus a 3 meter or 7.74 millimeters upward deflecting deflecting upward now the velocity i can calculate the velocity by squared that equals v y naught squared plus two a y y minus y naught and now this one is zero and i know v y squared equals two five point nine nine ten to the power of thirteen and then Vy is 7.74, 10 to the power, 6 meter per second. And the total velocity is Vx squared plus Vy squared and V is 
21.44 10 to the power of 6 meter per second. This is the magnitude. The angle. So I have by upward this way. I have bx this way. Then my v will be pointing in this direction. And this is the theta will be the y component tan, tan inverse theta is tan inverse the y component which is 7.74 10 to the power of 6 over the x component which is 2.2 2, 10 to the power of 7 and theta equals 2 21.16 degrees above x-axis.